success that I've had is kind of strange, if you think about it. It seems weird to me, um, because the books, when I first wrote The 48 Laws of Power, it, it was a novelty. There's no other book like it out there. And it very well easily could have bombed. And, uh, but of course, I could have never even written the book in the first place. There was a lot of things going against me. And you could say the same about 50. He should never have made it. He came from an environment where, um, where people don't get past square two. You know, they don't, they don't get out of the hood. They don't get into music. If they get into music, they don't last very long. So how did he overcome that? And I think in both of our cases, there's a kind of turning point that's very telling. Um, for me, I had been working in Hollywood um, for many years, and I was very depressed. I didn't feel comfortable. It wasn't my, my, the thing I was intended to do. And I was, I met this man in 1995, who ended up being the producer of my first book, Yost Delfer's, what we call a book packager. And he um, asked me if I had any ideas for books. We were in Italy at the time, we were working on a project. And I kind of improvised the idea that would later turn into the 48 Laws of Power this one afternoon. And he really liked the idea. And he said, someday you should try and develop this into a book. I came back to Los Angeles and I had to do my, I needed to work because I needed, I had jobs right then. It was very pressing to make some money. But then I, I kept thinking, you know, I should do, I should go for this thing that, that this man proposed. And I borrowed money from my parents and I wrote the treatment for the book. And basically, he liked the treatment a lot, enough to pay me to live for about a year to write the first half of the book. And the lesson for me was that I saw this one opportunity in life to get out of the rat hole that I was in and to do what I really wanted to do. And I put so much energy into it. I, uh, I knew that if I didn't write the best treatment, he wouldn't, pay, he wouldn't be interested in it. And I knew that if I didn't make this book as the best it could possibly be, it would never sell and I would never get out of the, the rat race I was in. So I was so focused and so motivated that I turned everything around. And I think 50 had the same moment after he was shot when it looked like probably at that moment he could have fallen off the face of the earth. He could have gotten a bit depressed. He could have tried to get back into music a year or two later. He, in the meantime, maybe he would try hustling again some way on the streets. He maybe could turn to drugs or alcohol. And it would have been the end of him and we would never have heard of him. But instead, he realized that in fact, he had an opportunity here after being shot to kind of use this in a marketing way and show that he was the one artist who really did come from the streets. Look, he had the bullet wound in his mouth to prove it. His, his voice was, was completely changed. And he saw that he actually, this was the one moment where he shouldn't wait, he shouldn't be cautious, he shouldn't be conservative about it. This was the moment to seize the opportunity and make this incredibly bold mixtape campaign, completely new sound, and it catapulted him to fame. And I guess the comparison to me in a smaller way, because I'm nowhere near as famous as he is, is that I created a book that was not normal, that was not conventional. It was as weird and different and unconventional as can be. And I think people, if you're, if you're looking for that moment, for that lane towards success or power, it has to be something that's different, that's unique, that's about you. And you don't, you shouldn't be so afraid to take chances to do something that no one has ever done before because that's the only area where you're going to get any power in this world.